This is the car wash on Sakala Duma Radio. This is Welcome to the car wash. This is episode 13 on today's show. No one says no to Gaston. Mitro's new gig and Deco and Sean named their top five PSL players. I am your host, Slu Paho. And I'm not alone in studio. I am joined by the one, the only Sean Roberts. Slew Dog, what an intro. Thank you, brother. How are you doing today? Magic, magic, magic. As always. Yeah, yeah. And Deco, <laughs> What's recovering up? from the weekend. How are you doing? The I'm, general? Re- I'm recovered, comrade. Fully recovered. Recover. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Let's get right into it. Micho has a new job. Damn. He is now the head coach of the Zambia national team. Chipolo Polo. <laughs> you don't know how they call that. Chipolo Polo. Yeah. What's that? It's like what they call Bafana Bafana. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah? yeah. Which means what? Chipolo Polo. Yeah. I don't know. So you're saying something, <laughs> you've no. got nothing to back it. <laughs> no, I'm saying, do you know that Zambia national team is called Chipolo Polo? No. Thank you. That's I do not. Oh, Thank you, Tekko. Chipolo Polo. Ah. If we've got so any, any In, in other words, you should never have left they know. Pirates. I mean, yeah. That, that's a f- job for me. Right. It's the Zambia national team. It's in- not, actually. It's an interesting one. It's, it's an it's interesting one. It's a desperate one, in my and opinion. Zambia are struggling. They're bottom of their Afghan qualifying group after two matches. So uh, a new head coach, it's, it's an interesting hire, I'd say. I mean, we still have to talk about why Mitchell left Zamalek in the first place. Or why he got fired. Yeah, why he got fired. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. I mean, he lost four of his 12 matches, won seven. Won the, I mean, he had nothing really to do with the Egypt Cup win because he yeah. had just been hired. But yeah. it's a strange, the the year, the past year for Misha has been weird. Like really, really weird. Uh, I, th- I think so. I don't know. I don't know what you think, Teko, but I just think it's a, from a coaching point of view, I think it's a desperate one from my side. Mm. I think he, he needed a job and he went for it. That's my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And I think for, for, for Zambia itself, it's a smart move for them. You know, sure. getting in that, uh, that experienced coach and it might actually ignite the players maybe mentality you know there's this mature that achieves this and this and that and also they've got ambitions also to qualify for mm. for the World Cup as well so it, it might actually help but also hey man they have to pay the guy yeah, of course you know and, and that also comes back to how are they actually going to structure the bonuses for the players mm. as well so the, I'm sure the players will question that as well because if they're throwing numbers in the media about how much they're going to pay him raise questions to the players, players as well. Yeah, 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 but like you said, I think for Micho, I think as, as as young as Micho is to coach a national team, it's a waste because you want that challenge that you're going to go to training every single day, yes. yeah. every weekend there's a game. Like you said, I'm sure he was like, I couldn't wait for any longer. I need to find something yeah. to do. Because the fact is, if Zambia is not going to qualify, I'm sure they're going to let him go. No, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so now you're going to find Micho in two years, actually, like, coach, I don't know, so many, so many teams. And including it's not good Zambia. for the CV, is it? It's not. Yeah. I think it, it's, it's not a smart move for him. I think he could have just waited a bit. I mean, mm. a couple of months down the line, season is finished. Co- teams are going to be actually looking for coaches. And 100%. he's one of the coaches that everybody wants to, him to come back into the country as well. So. Correct. Mm. So we'll see, we'll see. I just hope that Zambia knows exactly what they're doing and it might actually help. Because I promise you, you know, there's so many good players in Zambia, Chief. 100%. Yeah. So many good players. It's just that, I don't know, since after winning that AFCON uh, 19, my babo, they've never been the same. I love I love Teko's statistics, eh? He's, yeah. he's, he's no, right up there with the yeah, best. Yeah, but they won AFCON, you know, when they when they played Cote d'Ivoire in the yes, final, yes, yes, when yes. Drogba missed the penalty yes. and all that stuff. After that, they've never been the yeah. same. I yeah. think it was because I remember that squad very well. That's the same squad that we played against when it was just intru- uh, was introdu- uh, introduced, actually, sorry. Mm. <clears throat> Get that man a coffee. Introduct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Introduct. When, I, when I was introduced to, to, to Bafana Bafana setup, yeah. mm-hmm. it was the same team. So yeah. they built from that. They had the same team for so long. So when they won, I wasn't surprised at all. But I don't think they had a backup plan mm. because of the age, the age uh, average. There's no, there's no players feeding through. Exactly. Yeah. So now that's why they... They have to start afresh, and yeah. for Zambia to actually be in that position is a shame because of the quality that they have. So maybe there's there's more that means to I here. Maybe it's Mishu long term. Maybe this is a ten year plan. I don't know. Maybe maybe he'll maybe he'll be like who's the German national team coach who's just been around since forever. Joachim Low. The one, yeah. Yeah. Lowe. the one, no, the one yeah. who can't even shake his hand. <laughs> yeah, he picks his nose. Yeah, and play yes, with his balls. He's smelty- and- do you remember? Yeah. Uh, We've all done that, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just on camera. 
No black people do that. Mm. Please don't don't enter us into that thing. Fun fact, by the way, there's I think three uh, Pirates players who are Zambian who could potentially be reunited with me. So I think Shonga mm-hmm. is, is Zambian. Yeah, I this, saw that in the as well. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple. Yeah, that'll yeah. be interesting. So it should be interesting, uh, guys. Yesterday, you know, I spoke to I spoke to a legendary guy. Guys. Mm. Like um, we're gonna do memories from the Masters, um, and I spoke to Roger Fatumba, um, and I asked him who who's his uh, best opponent, big dog. biggest biggest rival, you know. And big here's dog. what he had to say. Now you played during one of the greatest eras of, of football in this country. Who was the player who you would consider the greatest that you've ever played against in South Africa? Oh, I always say daughter. <laughs> Daughter, because he was equally knowledgeable when he come to football uh, like I was. It was always difficult to, to, to play against him because you play against a player who can equally team like you. So, yeah, Daughter was one of the players uh, who was giving uh, me, if you want to put it that way, at time. What an interesting conversation I had with him. Uh, listeners who want, you can check out the big interview. Uh, but yeah, I, I I was too young to be able to get the chance to see those battles. But uh, I'm sure you guys got to witness <laughs> the greatness of Roger Fatumba. And uh, I was too young. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> I was a young sleep. warthog. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a young warthog. warthog. Yes. What I, like about, what I like about Roger Fatumba is he gives credit with his due. Mm. Like he's not one of those beta players that will... Mm always speak bad about the players that he played against. You know, I, I also had uh, an opportunity to have a conversation with him when I was still playing at Sundance, mm. you know, because I felt like um, that number 10 jersey was supposed to be justified at some mm. point, you know, and uh, he actually told me that actually after him, um, I probably maybe the first player that he actually enjoys watching play wearing that number. Who was after him, straight after him? Do you remember? Uh, there was a lot, dude. I remember there was Tandem Gomen at some point. There was Papi Zotwan at some point. There's mm. been there's been a lot. Mm. I don't remember that war. By but the way, been a lot. Uh, he was the general before you were the general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The original general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. So, so having that kind of conversation with him, it actually... So, so it was a up. fake general? <laughs> no, I'm the navigator. I don't know where oh, this general okay, comes okay. from. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Let least. me correct you, comrade. <laughs> so so it was, it was kind of great to actually have... Um, such conversations with the legends of the game because now they open your eyes actually and uh, he he wasn't just speaking of sundowns he was just speaking football and mm. I like having such conversations with people that actually play the game so that's why I'm saying I know that he gives credit where it's due for him to say Dr. Kumale we know we watch those yeah. games you yeah, know yeah. and Roger was the Roger you know the left footer we always used to Beast. but I, I felt like at that time when when he was playing that sundowns Rothman's Cup was their cup. Yeah. yeah. Forget you know, my play, not good in the league, but the Rothman's Cup come yeah. from nowhere. Rafael Chuku now becomes a top coach, but it was so nice watching Sundowns play that time. Rafael yeah. Chuku. And that was basically yeah. the beginning of Sundowns' dominance when, when he arrived, because he came in 97 and then they won three in a row. Mm. Um, that's according to, to kickoff.com. Uh, so wait, wait, what year did Patrice take over? Was it early 2000s? Yeah, I think it's early 2000s. Yeah. So sort of a couple of years after that. After that. So they've been dominating for a, a, while. a good while, hey? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Interesting. Very, very solid. So next in the news, we have Gaston Serino. No one says no to Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> He's no stupid one says this. no. I love that. Dean <laughs> Furman doesn't say no. Clayton Daniels doesn't say no. <laughs> Catch a slap from Gaston Serino. Oh, man. So now, you know, the uh, the prosecutor, maybe by the time this episode goes up, he'll have made his decision. Sure. Um, Nande Becker, who famously gave him Pumakola six months. Mm. Then they got that overturned. But um, I wanted to ask this question because he slapped two different players. Do you treat that as one instance or do you treat it as two? <laughs> That's got to be one. It's got to be, be one. It's got to be one. It's yeah. got to be one. But say he say he slapped two players in two different matches. Is it then two different instances or sure. do you punish sure. them Sure, then it's two. Sure, there's two. Then it's two. Slew, you're asking. Come on. Come on. But I mean, okay, he slaps on. one player. How, how many times, how many matches do you ban him for? Well, it's, it's got to be similar to McCullough's incident, wasn't it? Was it yeah, three, four matches? It's, yeah, it's four matches. Four and matches. assault, it's four matches. Yeah. Four matches. So now two different players, is it still four matches? Or is same it game. Because I think they, they take it as the same case. Because yeah. within the same game, now you have to be punished for... You can't be punished for two. 
It's not like Clayton Daniels for not retaliating either. Exactly. He's yeah. done all there. But I mean, yeah, Clayton, Clayton's <laughs> got his... battles. The, he, he talked to the media, I remember, afterwards, and he was like, he basically said, like, Serena's a little boy, like, yeah. with his reactions. <laughs> I've like, played with Clayton, yeah. I can, I can understand where he's coming from. Yeah, another interesting thing, by the way, Pizzo, who... By the way, Pizzo... Uh, cited uh, Nurkovic uh, saying he he saw Nurkovic kick a player in, in some game and said that Serena should get a lenient sentence. Mm. But another interesting one, because uh, Serena hasn't played for Uruguay, his, his native country, um, and he's apparently going to apply for citizenship, Pizzo rates Bafana should consider calling up Gaston Serena. No one says no to Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> You're very foolish. <laughs> sure, that's a biggie, hey? I didn't know has he been here that long already. Well, if he applies for citizenship, he hasn't played for any other national team, so he would qualify. Well, he's mm. certainly good enough in my eyes. Whether it will go down well in the in the football pr- uh, What's it? Fraternity? Is mm-hmm. it, is it, it's another big word, eh? Mm. Um, English can talk you, I see Teko shaking his head there. Can talk you, English can talk you. I need to read more. Um, what do you think of that, Tex? I mean, it's... Uh, I can't see it happening. It's For me, it's just that we've got too many Sorinos in the country. You know, not taking anything away from the talented boy, but, yeah. but I think we've got equally... Uh, um, good players. You mm. still have Yozwanis, we still have Mayama. There's so much. You still have Mbuli that is coming up. I think we've got so much. If Serena was probably maybe a striker that is banging in goals, mm-hmm. we'd be story. like, yeah, it's a different story. Yeah. But now he's an attacking midfielder. How many attacking midfielders we have in right. the country? We produce probably 10 a season. Yeah, we're saturating every... that department. Yeah, yeah. So I think if it happens, it'll be great. Maybe it'll start off you know, something great going forward. Mm. But for me, it's, it's it's not a position that we're lacking in the, in the national team. So, Good point. So I don't I don't think it's, it's... It's it's a necessity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, it's a conversation that we can have or Safa maybe might look into. But yeah. in all fairness, if you're actually going to play Sirenio with the lineup that we have, you still have Tulani, Sirenio, Serrero, mm-hmm. Zungu, yeah. Dolly. But also, you know, having, so having, having said that, um, Sirenio is not the best behaved guy, is he? Yeah. And would you want someone like that representing your country? Yeah, would he be yeah. the right guy in the camp? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, an interesting idea, though, is foreign nationals coming here and being able to play. You mentioned the need for a striker. Nurkovic hasn't played for any national team. Exactly. Um, there we go. Now you're talking. Yeah. Now, now you see, that's now a conversation. Exactly, that's a conversation. Because Slew is actually speaking sense. Yeah. <laughs> for <laughs> once. That doesn't happen <laughs> often, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this so, is the guy that we're dealing with the issues of discipline. Every every season, he yeah. gets a red card, something like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, we understand he plays the game with a passion, and he gets irritated very quickly. And it's easy to 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 irritate him. If if I had to play against him, I'll do the same thing just to get him off the game. You know what buttons you know the, to push? Exactly. But but that doesn't take away from his talent. Like he's very very talented. Absolutely. And uh, but he just did as 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 a proud South African. I don't think we need Serena. Mm. Yeah. I really don't think we need Serena. Nukovic, yes, most definitely, because that's a department that we've been struggling ever since Katla mm, mm. You know? But that, but but as a midfielder, I, I think we, we're gonna deny opportunities for so many young boys. Yeah, yeah. And good I think point. good point on, on what's needed mostly. I think, you know, uh Bafana Bafana, we, we talk about their their defense. It always feels a little shaky. Midfield, though, we've got so many options. Mm-hmm. And I think I think Pizzo's kind of just backing his guy. Oh, no, that's his job. And, yeah, that's his and, job. And, and, he has to do what he has to do. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I managed to get uh, Gerald Piri on for 10 quick fire questions. 10 quick fire is where we get your favorite PSL players, get them on the line, and put them on the spot. Yeah, I'm Gerald Piri. I play for Baroque, and these are my 10 quick fire questions. Funniest guy in the PSL that you have played with? Cavadinho Wahamba. Who is the flashiest dresser? Cavadinho Wahamba. You always like style, that guy. <laughs> Who is the worst dressed? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Come on. There's no one that you want to roast. Um, who's the worst dressed? Denwin Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> what is the worst mistake that you've made in a match? In a match, give a ball away and then end it in a goal. Who is a teammate who thinks that he's funny but actually isn't? Good man, Moselle. <laughs> what is your fondest footballing memory? Um, scoring for the national team to qualify for the World Cup group stages, the qualifying group stages. 
Do you remember who it was against? Against Botswana, recent. And then, what is your favorite car? Mercedes Benz. Would it happen to be the one that you drive, or is it a different model? A different one of the new ones. Yeah, oh, nice. And then, what is your favorite local food? I think you can do favorite Malawian dish and then favorite South African dish. Uh, I'm not really fond of South African food, but yeah, um, I think Jesus. I think my mom's um, got curry with rice, Malawian rice also. I actually have Malawian rice here. Are you are you able to find uh, Malawian restaurants in South Africa? Uh, yeah, but yeah, especially in Joburg. And then last but not least, what is your favorite holiday destination? Malawi, Lake Malawi. Oh, it's so beautiful. So he's repping Malawi hard. He's hey, like, dude. It's a beautiful country. Yeah, you know, I don't blame like, him. He's like, I don't even, I don't yeah. even like South African cuisine. Man. Get out of here, boy. <laughs> Give me Malawi and rice. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Throw that pop and scorpio. We'll take that. <laughs> goat curry does sound... I still haven't tried goat curry. And I've and, had goat curry. I've had turtle curry. Turtle curry? When I lived in Cayman Islands. And um tastes like chicken, man. Every what? time Why everything weird... that is so weird it always tastes like tastes chicken. Tastes like chicken. Crocodile tastes like chicken. I, no, I, I can agree with that. Thank you. I've had crocodile before. Yeah, crocodile Thank is you. nice. Crocodile is nice. Where yeah. did you have crocodile? Dude, in Joburg. Where? Uh, there's a place called Carnival. Yeah, small My dessert. mom has told me about Carnival. They, like, yeah. they bring you the cuts. And, like, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. It's Since crazy. You, you're celebrating your anniversary, it's take crazy. your woman there. Yeah, I gotta. Hmm? I could just gotta rep them. Their slogan is crocodile, the other, 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 other white meat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Should have said that for joke of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of joke of the day, instead of throwing it at the end of the show, let's just throw it right here. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, Sean. <laughs> right. Where do football directors go when they are fed up? The boardroom. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Guys, talk to me. Uh, <laughs> that was a kitty yeah. smile. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. I like it. I like it. I hated it. <laughs> I was so excited for a good one. <laughs> Simon, Simon laughed. Simon had a good chuckle. If Simon chuckles, you know, Teko's uh, laughing like it's the first joke he's heard. Thank you, Teko. <laughs> I'll take that one. Oh, uh, no. Well... <laughs> We've got a big money or a potential big money move in the papers. Uh, according to the CS special, 10 million rand is the price tag slapped on Richard or 40. Mm. <laughs> and there's three teams in the running. Of course, it's the big three always. Mm. Yeah, look, we, uh, me and Teko have spoken about this before. I think Chief should have gone in beginning of the season. Yeah, That was the time to do it. Yeah. Mm. I still think he's a he's a, a chief sort of goalkeeper. He would definitely fit into Pirates as well. Sundowns have goalkeepers. I know they're saying that they've got uh, Dennis who's aging, Kennedy's aging. They've got Riyadh who's only 27. Mm -hmm. um, I still think Dennis and Younger has got three, four years left in him. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's an absolute beast, you know. Yeah. Um, if For me, I think Chiefs have offered Cooney now um, another two years, as, as I believe. I think Daniel Akpai is uh, he's doing a great job. But long term, he will be back up. Mm -hmm. I think Kune will reclaim his number one spot. I believe mm -hmm. that. If he's going to go anywhere, in my opinion, it'll be Pirates. Yeah. Is he worth 10 million? <coughs> it's a, that's another question altogether. I is don't is it so. 10 million rands or guachas? <laughs> <laughs> Just the question. <laughs> 10 million rand. And apparently the reason why they slapped that price tag is because, uh, according to the paper, a Belgian club offered for him. Fair and enough. So they Fair slapped enough. a huge price tag. Because as soon as Europe comes calling, then you up the fee. Yeah. Um, but it's just that also, it's, it's, it's kind of shocking because now... You you base your selling a uh, player because somebody else wants them, and then there's no clause in the contract that has a buying out clause. Mm. I think players need to understand you need to have your buying out clause. It makes things easy if you want to move. Mm. But also coming back to 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 him, I think the better move for him if he goes to Sundowns or Chiefs, he's going to struggle playing. I agree. And now he's a number one goalkeeper in Ghana, and uh, they. They want to qualify for the World Cup. Everybody wants to see themselves playing there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, if he has to go to Pirates, no disrespect to Wayne Sunderland, but he will be the first choice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very, very solid. I mean, being solid at uh, Marisbeck for so long, yeah. 
um, with the Lionel Pirates, it'll it'll make things easier for him because now it'll give him that. You that know, is the next step for him. I yeah, think. yeah. As a big international keeper, yeah. I think Mar- Maritzburg is. Look, he's been given the opportunity to shine at Maritzburg, yeah. mm-hmm. which is a, what usually happens with a smaller team. Yeah. And now it's time for the next step. Is yeah. he good enough for Europe? Uh, possibly. He's, possibly. A, he's a unit. Yeah. He's a big boy. Yeah. yeah. He's he's a good goalkeeper. If he is was to stay in South Africa, without a doubt, Pirates is the team. Pirates is the team, yeah. and they have the right connections, according to the paper. Uh, the what's the chairman, Irvin Koza, and um, the the Maritzburg chairman yeah. are good mates. Yeah, um, there's they, been a lot of business done there in the past. Yeah, well. yeah, the yeah there's links with Fadlu David. Kataringa as well went from. Macaringa. Macaringa, sorry. Mm. Who's Kataringa? Hey, Macarena, Macarena, Hey, Macarena. Hey, but, but you know fraternity though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, interesting one. I think I agree with you guys. Pirates seems like it also seems like because of those relationships, Pirates might be able to lower the fee there because mm. obviously Pirates doesn't have pockets like Sundowns. Mm. So you know they should they might be able to negotiate a little easier. There. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, looking back at this past January, let's take a look at some of the best signings in the window. Who 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 do you in guys think did uh, in the window to, to the, the wall? wall. Yeah. Um, you know what? Nothing really catches my eye here. You know, mm-hmm. I think Godinho to Vitz, great signing for Vitz. Yeah. We discussed last week where is he actually going to play? Time mm. will tell. Um, you know, Scotty to Stellenbosch, Karu to Stellenbosch, Zungu to Pirates from Stellenbosch. You know, yeah, yeah but nothing really that says, wow, what a signing. I think yeah. those are more for June, July sort of uh, transfer windows, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, true. I think also for me, it's 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 just that. I don't think there's like a big, big signing that happened, but but just that one of those interesting moves, like Musa Nyatama, is, I never saw it coming. Like mm. it's an interesting move, and especially going to Highlands Park. Mm. So now it, it actually gives you a different look as to what Highlands Park are trying to do. Mm. Are they going to try and play differently to how they've been playing? And if so, how are they going to be able to play Yeye and Musa Nyatama at the same time? Mm. Are they going to be a backup of each other because of the age? So it's kind of interesting to actually see actually what is it that they're trying to do. And especially at this time of the season, for me, it's very confusing because I'm, I'm not sure what they're trying to do because we know we all know how Adams Park are playing. Sure. Just park whatever the bus that run they you park, off the field, then, yeah. then they, they have to run you out. And Musa Nyatama is, let's play. You know, I'll start the game, let's play. Do they have the players? Uh, at Highlands Park at the back to actually start the play and mm. give Musa Nyatama the point, ball yeah. mm. they don't have so how is Musa Nyatama going to play Musa Nyatama doesn't even have a long pass mm. Mm. so now it's it's kind of tricky and, and, and it will be very very interesting to see and also with the rumours that the coach is going are they building for next season with a new yeah. coach or are they going to try and continue with, with, with um, Owen because mm. we all know Owen Owen has been coaching in the PSO for the longest time mm. and we all know all these teams that he coaches they play the same way yeah. yeah, there's no way that he can change right now mm. and be the new Owen. Now, let me introduce, uh, you know, Diamond in the midfield, and there's no, no it's such not going to happen. Yeah. So for Musa Nyatama, it will be very, very interesting. It'll be, it'll be. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it's going to work out. Actually, time will tell. And I mean, you mentioned Nkaniso Zungu to to Pirates uh, from Stellenbosch, highly rated. Uh, Jomosono. Uh, recently compared him to both Ernest uh, Chirwali and Roger Fatumba, which is high praise. Mm. Um, in his performances for Stellenbosch FC, obviously, you know, uh, compared to the level of play for Pirates now, um, how difficult do you think it's going to be for him to make that starting eleven? It's going to be difficult, but... but Sean, oh, he I won't. finish? <laughs> he won't. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Teko. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, I think having seen him at Stellenbosch um, and Stellenbosch with all due respects are poor mm. um, he did stand out whether or not he can stand out like that at Pirates is a whole other story altogether mm. um, if he is to make the starting lineup at any point it's going to be tough mm. it's going to be t- it's, it's an interesting signing yeah. put it that way yeah. what were you going to say Turco before you really interrupted me <laughs> <laughs> He he won't even make a starting lineup, and it will be very very actually difficult to actually to make eleven, mm. not even eleven the eighteen. 18. Yeah. Mm. The reason is that uh, they still have Umlambo, and uh, who is a quality player, quality big midfielder, time. big big time, mm. and uh, big games they show up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, to play at Stellenbosch, like you say, it's easy for to to be recognized because. 
there's not so much quality within mm. the team. Now you're having to compete with so much quality every single day. So now, is is he a kind of player that can give us more than what he was giving Stellenbosch? I doubt. Because now at Paris, they require you to play, you know, at a certain level every single week. Mm. If you don't know, go ask Lodge how... Mm. Tough it is to play the same way every mm. week. We've seen a lot of we've seen players coming into London Pirates and disappearing. We've seen so many players, very talented players. Mm. Of course, it's a big team. When they call, of course, you want to go in there. I mean, and have your London Pirates jersey. I mean, everybody wants to play for big teams. But the reality is, is he gonna play? Because it's telling what she was playing week in week out. Mm. If I was him. I was going to sign a pre-contract, leave at the end of the season where yeah. I have an opportunity to impress during sure. pre-season. Because yeah. now you're going to get there. You know what they're going to do? We'll get him there two weeks' time. We're playing a smaller Yana team. We're very comfortable. They throw him in. He's going to come there with those passes. He's a good pass of mm. the ball. And then the crowd are going to love him. And then when the big games come, because you look at the Pirates games that they're going to play, mm. those are very, very big games. Sure. They're playing Vets. They're playing <clears throat> Sundowns. They're playing Chiefs. Those are very, very big games. So now he's not a player that actually put... You cannot put him before you put Mlambo in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it just it's it's whether it's a signing that will help next season or the signing that will help now, it's very, very, very really disturbing. And, and also, if he does make the starting eleven, can he handle the pressure? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? You've been there. I mean, yeah, yeah. Pirates is no Stellenbosch. It's, yeah, yeah. it's a whole different kettle of fish Especially altogether. with the form that they've been on Correct. now. Yeah. It's, it's, he has to come in and hold the same level. Exactly. He, or he better, he's going to be better the level. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's why they signed him. Yeah. You're not going to sign a player who's just as good as what you have. Yeah. You're going to sign a player who's better. Yeah, yeah someone who can And that's like the question. Is he better than what they have? I, for me, I don't have any problem with Zunga. I think he's a very talented player. But I, I strongly... He still needs to prove me wrong. Mm. I strongly believe that he, he's he's not better than what Pirates have mm. with Mlambo. Who's that other boy that normally comes in as a sub? Now he's forever on the bench. Mlambo is no longer now in mm. the coach's plan. There was this other boy that played for Cosmos and Cheaper. Mm. We'll Mtambo. Mtambo. Yeah, Mtambo. He's, he's not. And you still have Ben Mutsuari. You still have Makaringe. That gives mm. you so mm. much. And uh, so for me to actually be part of that. But of course, he's a different player. Mm. When you actually look at him the way he plays. I just wish that if he gets there, he must remember what took him to actually get to a lot yeah. of parts. If yeah. he forgets that, and then he's just going to disappear. We'll see him at Chippa yeah. United next season yeah. or at the ABC Mutsipa Cup. <laughs> Unless there are players leaving next transfer window. Most definitely. Lolan Pirates always said every season. So then, then there leaves. could be an opportunity. But yeah, interesting space. He Looking just, forward to seeing what happens. Yeah, and he's 24. Still got some time. Of course. Of course. Um, you know, on the, on the, uh, going the other way or not the other way, but um, leaving Pirates on loan, Justice Shabalala. Uh, interesting one going to Celtic uh, because Celtic was where Godinho was. Mm. Um, and it kind of looks like maybe this is a last chance for Justice to prove um, that he has the chops to 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 be in the starting eleven, mm. but I don't know if 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 Pirates take him back or sell him in in the summer. Um, another interesting one, especially because of uh, the Net Bank Cup mm. um, recently, uh, Gamal Dean for for Chipper United goal and an assist in the Net Bank Cup for 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 Chipper United. Your favorite? Yeah, my favorite team <laughs> in the entire world. I mean, it's great. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we we watched him against Pirates. And um, he came on, I think, after X amount of minutes, and he, he changed the game. Mm. Like, um, and I think he scored a brace now in the, in the Net Bank Cup. I can't remember if he scored one or uh, two. Goal and an assist. Yeah, and he scored eleven goals for Steenbergers on loan there. So um, he's on form. Yeah. Um, well done on Shepard to get them back, uh, get him back, and um, yeah. I, I, unfo I say unfortunately, but Shepard seems to be on a little roll. They're actually playing. <laughs> I hate to say this, but decent football. Mm. Yeah. For the PSL standards, I'm saying. Yeah. And it's hilarious to think that, that, that that's the that's the Nedbank Cup champions that they just knocked out. TS Galaxy already gone. TS who? <laughs> Samsung Galaxy. Yeah. Um, and then another one that I wanted to ask you guys about Nathan Sinkala to Stellenbosch from TP Mazembe. Uh two-time CAF Champions League winner, uh, 29 years old. Hmm. Uh what do you think of that one? I mean, Stellenbosch look like they're, you know, they're at least they're already replacing Zungu. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, they need experience. Yeah. Mm. They need that balance. They've got a couple of young players. They have got a lot of older players. No disrespect to them. But they need... What they do lack is leadership. Yeah. Mm. And I'm hoping this guy brings... Because I want Stalin Bosch to stay up. Yeah. I like Steve Barker. I like what he's doing. Um, and for us to have another Cape Town team is amazing. Yeah. Um, and I hope he brings that, what Stalin Bosch really do need. 
definitely. Of course, it's, especially with the experience that he has. I mean, mm. playing in that Champions League, it's it's very, very different than when Big you time. come here. Yeah, I think he, he'll bring that brightness, especially in the midfield, you know, that leadership that you mm. speak about. Because I think that it'll be great for Cape Town to have Stellenbosch within the league, you know. Mm. But also, it's it's you look at the team itself, you look at where we're going to get goals. Mm. You know, I, I thought Stellenbosch would be like, we want like a tall striker somewhere, you know. 100%. Nathan Paul's the type of a player yeah. to bring because that's how they play. They play with crosses. Yeah. You know, but but you keep, at least for the fact that they, they see that they need to, you know, sign players to yeah. actually try and help the team, it really uh, uh, says to them that we, they realize that, you know, coming in with those players that they had at NFD is not going to cut it. 100%. So we need to have experience while they have experience, while they survive and then come next season, they need to have younger players that are yeah. actually good and then build for the future. Mm. Definitely. Correct. Up next, we have pole position. Pole position. Boop. Poll position is where we ask our listeners on Facebook a uh, question, a topical question of the week. This time around, we asked who will win the PSL Footballer of the Season Award come May. And this is what they had to say. I'll go for Kadozo. Mango. Kokota Piano. Some interesting thoughts there. Lebohang Manyama. A clear front runner there, I'd say, from the from the poll. But uh, from there, let's go into Deco and Sean, your top five PSL players. Yeah, I'll start with mine. I'm going to go Nurkovic. Number five. Um, I actually haven't put a, a, a number on it, but oh. uh, yeah. I mean, let's just go to the five and I'll tell you why. Nurkovic, I think just what he's brought this season, um, unbelievable. Mango for Pirates. He said he's going to score 15 goals in public. He's on 14. He's got to be there. Yep. I put Daniel Lakpai because as a goalkeeper, he got a lot of stick in the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. To bounce back the way he's done in a massive team like Chiefs, he deserves to be there. Mm -hmm. And Dile Jali, I've got him there because he surprised us all. I still believe he's a bit of a ticking time bomb in terms of what could possibly happen outside mm -hmm. of football. And possibly a surprise one, but Rushin Derek, the centre-back for Maritzburg, I think yes. he's been phenomenal for them. Mm. So that is my top five in no specific order. Those are my five players. Interesting. Yee! Interesting. And I've got my extra two there. Can I throw in there? So yeah, I've got Tuli for Amazulu. We've got mm -hmm. white privileges, so go <laughs> Thank on. You. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I've got Tuli for Amazulu because he scored so many goals for a team. Yep. And uh, Manyama, I've got as well. I was about to say, no mention of uh, yeah. Lebo Manyama there. And Deco, your From, top five. Uh, uh, there's Nukovic. Mm -hmm. There's a mango. Just check. And is he is he is he making it up or? And there's Memela. I think I see a list there. Memela. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And then there's Zwani. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's five. Ne? That's four. No, I said mango, Memela, Zwani, Nukovic, and Manyama. Oh, did you say Manyama? Yeah, that's five. So now, I'm not gonna rank. No, I'm not gonna rank them. But I just want to speak about the mango and Memela issue. You mm. know, it's it's. For for Mamela to actually play that, I never knew that he can play the position that he's playing now. Mm. And uh, his he ability has, to turn that exactly. Oh, so so he's got a pass, and that's a position that most players in South Africa we struggle to find. Mm. The player that can play at the ten mm. and actually turn and be able to give that final pass. Correct. We struggle to get that. That but it's usually parking that, backwards or yeah, or, 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 yeah, you know, or sideways. They always play sideways. Mm. For the fact that he 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 does this every week, mm. I mean, it's amazing. And of course, Mango, you know, yeah. he he puts way. The mouth in there where it is. <laughs> Said he's gonna score 15, he's on 14 already. So yeah. he looks like he might take the top goal scorer of the season mm. if he yeah. continues the way that he does. But also he needs to stay disciplined on the pitch because he's always forever gets yellow card unnecessarily. Yeah, you know? he, he's missing Pirates uh, Netbank Cup clash uh, Two, on the weekend. 2000 exactly. Yeah. So now you could also use Zwane. The reason why Zwane is because I know that when whenever he's not playing at Sundown, Sundown's Struggle. A different team, yeah. yes. Yeah. So now for actually to be a player that carries so many superstars in one team, it takes a lot. Mm. And for the fact that Zwan is a very mellow guy, quiet guy, goes on about his business. Disciplined. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, he's got a big heart. I mean, it's it's we've seen so many players crumble in that situation. Mm. For him to be actually doing that week in, week out, whether it's Champions improving. League. And improving. Yeah. Whether it's Champions League, whether it's domestic, is 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 amazing. Mm. Yeah. So I mean Manyama. It's, it's, I think it's important in Keza Chief's role. 
yeah. the way they play you know when and in transition whenever after winning the ball they always look to to, to give the ball to Manyama Manyama is the one that actually starts those moves yeah. and uh, it's just a pity I've never seen Kezi Chief this in playing when Manyama is not there yeah. but it's just that they always look good when Manyama is on the ball because he drives the ball in he always finds spaces that's why he created so many goals and uh, yeah, I mean he's exciting to watch and yeah he's, he scored an important goal yeah. you know that was a very very important goal and Nukovic is amazing mm -hmm. so for me player of the years should be between Nukovic and Mango. Mm, you know, it'll be very me. interesting to see for once, let's have a top goal gonna be a player of the year. The last mm. time we had this was Nasir Bonga on Vet. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it'll be very, very interesting to see foreigners actually coming back and, and yeah. being football of the year. So it'll be very dope. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, Mango's from? Uh, Malawi. Malawi. Yeah. Um, Malawi. And then um, Nukovic is Croatian, right? Serbian. 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 Serbian Eastern yeah. European. So the Serbian, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's an interesting one. I, I think uh, for the first time, well, last season I, I felt like Lorch was a shoe in for the award. Mm. Like he was like kind of the runaway favorite. He also won a different award. I think he won Players Player mm. of the of the season mm. as well. Uh, walked away with like four hundred and fifty thousand from that night. Mm. But this time around, I think it's a lot more tight. Like there's this, which there's is options. cool. Yeah. I, remember I said last week, how many times have we seen the PSL where we're sitting at the halfway mark and there's it's five or six players that are over 10 goals. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or close to 10 goals. It hasn't happened in years. Also, it would be so great to see a football of the year come in the next season and win it again. Yes. Yes. Consistency. Consistency. That's big match temperament, I mean, which is what we lack in know, this country. So yeah. you see a football of the year once and then boom, gone. Then the next season is another one. You're not yeah. even a nominee. At least mm. be a nominee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Try, fight it. Fight so hard so that you can retain your title. But mm. Yeah. But I guess it's tough. Dude. And to remind everyone, Deco is the right person to call everyone out on that because last player to do it back to back. Thank you. Was the great I want to thank my, my family, <laughs> my <laughs> doggy. <laughs> Big doggy. <laughs> Moving on to this week in football history. Yeah. So on the 5th of February 2011, this one is sad for me, Newcastle earned a dramatic point against Arsenal coming back from 4 0 down. Mm. Check to your finish. Yes. That mm. monster haunts my dreams. I remember that. You, yeah, a I lot of people that. remember. It, you know what? When that went in, you know what it reminded me of? Essien's goal against Arsenal. Mm. Where it was, you remember that just disgusting, yeah, almost like Zidane-esque, but with curve. <laughs> so many good goals have been scored against Arsenal, man. <laughs> so many goals in general. In general. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, this one is very sad, so I'm going to speed through it. On the 6th of February, 1958, an airplane containing Manchester United's players and soft uh, crashed in Munich, killing 23 passengers. Wow. Uh, obviously, we always look back on the Munich air disaster. I'm sure if Man United were playing this weekend, they would have had sure. some form of moment of silence or, or something like that. But sure. I think they're on like a like a bit of a break. It's only Man City uh, winter that's break. playing on the it's weekend. Winter break, yeah. yeah. Enforced yeah. winter break, yeah. Just ask yeah. Jürgen Klopp about the winter yeah. break. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one is a funny one it's, it's quite a meaty one but uh 9th of february 1979 nottingham forest signed a striker trevor francis mm. to break the one million pound barrier for the first time wow. interesting fact they tried their best to make the transfer fee 999,999 pounds just so that the million pound mark wouldn't go to his head but they were stupid because the taxes put the fee over wow. to 1.1 million pounds anyway. Mm. Um, Francis ended up being very good for them, um, scored the winner in the European Cup final and won the League Cup for them, but then injuries hampered it. Yeah. So that was the first time they went over a million pounds. Trevor wow. Francis. Interesting. The GOAT. The legend. The go he is <laughs> a legend. Yeah. The myth. I think he, uh, he played for Sheffield Wednesday as well. Hey, he was a... Uh... I have no idea. Yeah. Good chat. Thanks, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> And since then, we've gone on to see so many unnecessarily large signings. Uh, yes. Me and Aiden were actually talking about João Felix for Atletico Madrid. Actually, Atletico Madrid as a team. Yeah. What's the what's uh, I again? think it's in the last two and a half seasons on four offensive players. Atletico Madrid have spent around 300 million. <laughs> but collectively, in 159 games, they've only scored 13 goals. Wow. So just uh, wow. like yeah, bang for your back, eh? Yeah, exactly. That's Joe Felix, you well. Yeah. Wow. That's a Simeon's <laughs> tactics for you. You want to sign Is all that the why best. they want to let him go? <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Sign all the best attackers and then play defensive. Yeah, yeah. Large. Yeah. <laughs> you know, system 10 1. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, do we have some players abroad? Players abroad. 
Players abroad on Soccer La Duma Radio. Yeah, I love that, eh? Who's that? It's actually she my sounds girlfriend. Nice. She's, she sounds very beautiful. Who is? Yeah, that's my girlfriend, Zizi. Oh, like, yeah. We didn't know in the office. Tickle. No one in the office wanted to. Have some respect, bro. It's <laughs> so, I can't say she's beautiful. How do you know? You haven't even seen her. She actually she sounds beautiful. <laughs> yeah, guys. She sounds beautiful. She beauty is, is a beauty. She and beauty actually. lies in the eyes of the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so, come on. A fun, funny story about that. When we were trying to record, nobody in the office, none of the girls in the office wanted to do it. Really? And so, yeah, I just hollered at my girl. I was like, please, can you just say no, players still, abroad? Thank you, Slu. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> right, players abroad. Yep. Kamo Hela Mokocho, Lebo Matiba, Kosi Inke are all injured last weekend, unfortunately. Damn. Kurt Abrahams, Danny Amos, Tom Barkhazen, Darren Keats, Tabo Kele, Tulani Serrero, Mayambela, and Lebo Khangpiri all started for their, their teams in the respective weekend. Very nice. Hendrik Ekstein and Tabang Pete also came on as substitutes. But a notable omission, Keegan Dolly still out. He would have played against Neymar and Mbappe if he was fit oh, against the PSG, which yeah. would have been amazing. What is going on with Keegan? Yes, ever since he went there, man, he's been struggling he, with injuries. We should maybe yeah. do an interview and just check how he's doing. Eh? Yeah, yeah, we should try to get him on the line. He struggles with injuries, like, and 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 that messes his, his growth. He's man. a hell of a player. He's eh? a hell of a player, man. Because it was a recent knock, right? Because I think week before he he grabbed a goal. I, mm. remember, I remember seeing Joe Cran tweet his his goal. It was a tap in, but still, you know, you want those. Hey, my friend, a goal is a goal. Goals are goal, hey. We need yeah. those. We take it. We take it. And then uh, staying abroad, let's do the international news disc. Sound like cut blanche. <laughs> <laughs> so Neymar got a yellow card for a rainbow flick. <laughs> Showboating again. We were just discussing Pizzo and Macaringa a couple weeks back, and now Neymar. I need to tell you guys the backstory, like what happened in the tunnel, the arguments though. So Neymar could be heard telling his teammate, uh, Marco Verratti, I play football and he shows me a yellow card. Tell him he can't give me a yellow. <laughs> the referee responded, calm down. And then after the match, Neymar approaches him again, trying to argue. And the ref just, <laughs> he just looks him dead in the eye and says, speak French. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a there's a part of me that thinks that the ref just doesn't like Neymar. Like, <laughs> I'm sure there's a few people that don't. Yeah. But we spoke about this, Teco, a couple of weeks ago. Where mm. The guy's from Brazil. Mm. Like, what do you think he's going to do? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And also, if you, if you watch the highlights, there was like three Montpellier players on him. Yeah. So, like, he's backed into a corner. He tries the rainbow flick to get out of it. And then he gets a yellow for that. Like, it, it make, For me, it makes no sense. And also, it's it just... It's, it's you're stupid. trying to tell Neymar not to be Neymar. That's what you're trying to do. Exactly. I mean, VAR is taking so much. Mm. Now you want to take the flair away. Mm. And, and Neymar's been doing this even when at Barcelona. He yeah. was doing this with, even when he was at Santos. Mm. You know? And uh, even in the national team, he still does that. So now if you, you as a referee trying to stop players from expressing themselves, it, it becomes disturbing because at the end of the day, people are paying to come and watch players. They're not, nobody pays to come and watch the referee. Mm. So sometimes the referee wants to be the center of attention mm. and most of the time they're targeting the star players. Mm. Yeah. And now it's, it becomes boring at times. We've got a couple of those refs in the PSL, don't we? There's a lot of them yeah. in the PSL. Eh? You can't even speak to them. At least for yeah. the fact that this one said, calm down in the PSL, you get a red card for having <laughs> yeah. to communicate with the referee. And exactly. also comes, it comes back to the point where in South Africa we're saying, hey, Makaringa this and all that stuff. I think there's too many people that I think they've got football manuals, mm. Mm. you know? Because at first we're saying, uh, you know, when you're playing the game, you should have fun and enjoy, be expressive, and it's a beautiful game. So if you take the beauty out of everything, mm. then what are we going to watch? Mm. Because mm. now I think we, we, we're so focused in certain players must play like this. Who are you to tell somebody to play the way? Correct. You, you need to allow players to be expressive and to enjoy the game. We always... we. You know, Sean, you play mm. the game. I wish at times in my in, in, in my playing days, I, I wish I could have that joy that I had when I was a kid. Mm. You know, having that fun. But now you must understand you're in a business uh, uh, mm. situation right now. But still at the end of the day, you need to enjoy what you're doing. And uh, yes, sometimes it's silly. We can agree. Mm. But also the fans, when you they walk out of there, they need to have like, you know what? 
paid 40 rands. You know, it's justified. You know, I love it. And you must understand, Neymar is an inspiration for so many youngsters there. Yeah. So many youngsters after the game, they're actually going out to actually practice what Neymar Correct. is doing. Yeah. We used to do That's that with Dr. Selling Kumar. T-shirts, bro. Exactly. Yeah. We used to do that with Doggies. Mm. Dr. Kumar used to do that. We'll go outside and call ourselves Likulia. We'll do the same. Jabupulu will do the same. Yeah. So why now it becomes an issue? Like, can you imagine this referee in the age of Ronaldinho? Yeah. Ronaldinho was hitting rainbow flicks every week. Yeah, yeah. lifetime like was, suspension. Man, man, yeah. control with his back. <laughs> yeah, just bah. You know what I mean? Man. And he would do that with a smile. Okay, because, and he wasn't doing that with a smile. That's how he is. Mm. It's not like he chose to smile. He just said he's got big teeth. But that's not the point. <laughs> 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 but but it's just that he was a likable guy. Yeah. But yeah. I think because the 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 they're trying to paint Neymar as as this hooligan yes. and all that stuff. Bad boy. But yeah, and he's not. Guys, why why can't we focus on the talent that he has? Mm. You know, I think for Neymar, these are the signs. Chief, come to Barcelona, we're waiting. Yes, <laughs> these are the signs. I mean, yeah. there's nothing that he can do. There's no way that Neymar can win a Ballon d'Or playing in France yeah. before Mbappe. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. yeah. They will never, because French people are trying to push Mbappe to that level. Mm. But now Mbappe has an outburst also with the coach. It becomes mm-hmm. a problem. Mm. He's Mbappe going to Madrid, Madrid eh? Yep. yep. He, he, yeah, Madrid. so they, they might as well bounce. Because, I mean, also, they, you're playing with your Kick and Dolly's team. You're playing mm. with the, uh, all these teams. You only have one probably tough game within the season. Yeah. You're 15 points clear. You're I winning mean, 5-0 you know, against Montpellier, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then come Champions League, you meet tough games and then you, you might get to the semis. Yeah. Then that's it. Yeah. You know, I think if you if Neymar wants to win Bolando, you want to be in He's got to move. Position to win the World Cup, move come yeah. right. Go to Barcelona. Speaking of Barcelona, Barcelona. Lionel Messi or oh, let's start with Eric Abidal, their director of football. Didn't did an interview in the paper where he accused some he didn't name uh, players, uh, which I think was Messi's problem with the whole situation. Yeah. Got he, a said bit messy. Players, he said players were not working hard enough under the My former man. coach Valverde. Uh, and then Messi, they asked him about it, and he said, When you talk players, you have to give out names because if not, it gives air to things which are not true. Mm. And I think that's speaking to this whole idea that um, Messi has control and he pulls strings at Barcelona. Of course he, he does. Said, I mean, yeah, sure, but I, I think um, he's he's upset at this idea that maybe he doesn't work as as hard as he used to, which I think is a myth, if we're being honest. His the work, his work on pitches speaks for itself. Yeah, right? I find it hard to believe. I think him and uh, I think him and Ronaldo, you know, are just a diamond. You know, are just so rare. Mm. I'll be very surprised if Messi is not the first one in and the last one out every day. Mm. Yeah. Just yeah. like Ronaldo is. Yeah, of I'll course. I'll be very, very, very surprised. Uh, of course. I mean, he can't be at the top for so long mm. and not train that way that he's supposed to. Mm. It's impossible. Mm. And also, if 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 the argument is about uh, who pulls the strings there, would you rather have Messi pulling the strings or Abidal, Abidal pulling mm. the strings? I mean, who's more influential? Yeah. Who has brought all the trophies? You know what I'm saying? And uh, and I feel like certain things that need to be addressed. In, in in the boardroom, like a big team like uh, Barcelona, mm. if there's certain things, you need to call everybody in, and you know, uh, yeah, this is quite childish. Like yeah, a family, it's like little little kids. And today yeah. there's a crisis meeting actually because yeah. of you, you know that my Messi like has a, a clause in his contract where he can terminate it uh, anytime he wants to. Mm. You know, so probably maybe they're scared of that. And also Messi wants to be in a team that it wins. And look at the coaches, look at the system that they're yeah. applying. So it becomes. He's, they're not installing confidence really. exactly yeah. in him, and of yeah. course you want to keep that kind of a player because of number one, he sells tickets. Number two, he makes the team what it is. I mean, there's a lot of business with Messi. So now, yeah. Abidal comes in. Number one, Abidal had a heart disease. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, he, did. I didn't know yeah, he almost he, died. He almost died yeah. when he was playing for Barcelona. He almost died. They won a trophy for him and all the stuff. They wow. they they did so much for him, mm. but it, and he couldn't control the ball, so he must keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, he was a left uh, back. This left is back. Why I love Teko Medice. Yeah, yeah, but you know, apparently the the meeting went well. Abidal's going to keep his role, um, but then you start seeing these Messi to Man City rumors. I don't like seeing. Nah, it will never happen. It will never. It's just that that's the That'll problem. Be cool. That's that's the problem. When whenever there's issues, there's so many people that runs to the media and speak about what's happening in the house. Yeah. Mm. You know, if there's in-house issues, solve the in-house issues in-house. Yeah. Don't run to the media because now you you open up that gap that everybody can say whatever they want to. Even mm. in Barcelona, even if the stories 
You know, there's always Dembele never came out and said, guys, but I sleep at six. Mm. Why are you saying I'm sleeping at 4 a.m. in the morning? Yeah. Because they're keeping the issues in house. Yep. Yeah. So now all of a sudden, now you feel like you're entitled to say something. Number one, when you're at the hospital, he was playing for you. Mm. Do you understand what mm. I'm saying? You just yeah. said now because you're in a position of power, you're abusing your power. Don't yeah. do that. Because yeah. at the end of the day, the business, the business are the players. And people need to fall. Players are the assets. It. Exactly. Yeah. People that are in office, they're just chilling there, not with your shit, but a nicer one. They think that they're in charge. They can say yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. they want for, for the yeah. players. And yeah. Not understanding that the business, people actually come to the stadium to watch the players. Nobody wants to watch Abidal, Correct. Yeah. whatever his name is. Correct. Stay out of the press. Time for calm. They have a brand new coach. Let's focus on that. Please. Yes. Thank you, um, Do we have time for my starter pack? I do. We do have it. Yeah, loaded up. I think, I think we can squeeze it in. Let's squeeze it in. Which PSL player gave Clayton Daniels the most problems? Uh, when, when I used to play for Ajax and we have to play against Sundowns. And I, I had to play against the likes of Surprise Moriri and Tori Alba. You know, that, that too, when they were at Sundowns, they were giving me problems. We did discuss this last week. Uh, Surprise Moriri, the legend. Um, Clayton <coughs> Daniels, massacred. No, you're giving me problems, man. <laughs> problems. <laughs> Clayton Daniels. Ah, oh, the veteran. But I'm Clayton. sure a couple of strikers will put Clayton Daniels as one of the hardest defenders to play against. No, he's annoying. Yeah, I think it's one he of the gets under your skin, Yeah, he gets he? under your skin. He's like that. He's a no. He was he was actually getting and even even at the time at Sanders were like teammates. Mm. He'll do that to you when you're not having a good game. Shut up! You don't want Clayton to come and speak to you. <laughs> so he he's that type of a guy. He he's demands indeed, the he best. He demands the best. And yeah, it's no surprise to see him winning so many trophies at SuperSport. Excellent. So even though there's been another match for Chipper United, mm. um, you and we Chipper. have. You, yeah, love, you love Chipper. You love right? Chipper. Eh? Hey, look, they won 3 0, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. should we touch on, on the Pirates' victory briefly? Oh, against Chipper? Yeah, yeah, quickly. Um, Chipper surprisingly could have gone either way. Mm. They could have got a draw, they could have even got a victory, but um, deserved win for, for Pirates. Pirates are playing attractive football. We've spoken about that before. Yep. The Zinbauer effect mm -hmm. as our. Uh, editor's column in the Soccer Duma, VJ says, and it's it's very true. What he's brought to the to Pirates is is fantastic. They're actually enjoyable to watch at the moment. Yeah. Um, but do we want to speak about Chipper? Nah. Did you see the Pirates coach on, uh, on on Twitter? There was a video of him dancing in the locker room. In the locker room, yeah. Yeah, to some house music. Yeah, 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 yeah. First, I've never <laughs> seen anything like that with any PSL <laughs> coach. It's going to get injured. We've seen that before in other coaches, but not at Orlando Pirates. Yeah. That's a team that That's has cool, eh? so much culture, yeah. you know, this strict and all that stuff. For him to, to be able to do that, it shows the kind of relationship that he has with his players. Already. Already. Yeah. So that's why we see certain players are performing to the best of their abilities because he is that kind of a coach that is approachable. Yeah. I mean, players, a, a good example, Ebel Mabasso, I mean, he played, I think, two games in two seasons. Yeah. And now he's, you know, he's... The regular feature now. Absolutely. And he's improving every game. Absolutely. That's all you need so, is, but, you so know, it's thank a you, Zimbabwe. Hopefully, we'll learn so much from him. Definitely. Do we have some updates on the leaderboard? We do. We do. So both Sean and Teka got two correct. There we go. From mm -hmm. the previous weekend. Arrows versus Supersport, you both got wrong. Amazula versus Polokwane, you both got right. Leicester versus Chelsea, quite a shock result there, but you both got it wrong. Spurs, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Spurs versus City, both got it wrong. And United versus Wolves, you both got it right. So that leaves both of you on 29 out of 46 correct. No yeah. one says no to Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. Where did you find that? That's brilliant. It's Beauty and the Beast. Oh, oh yeah. of course. Yeah. Gaston. Of course. That is so cool. We have some saucy Ned Bank Cup games this weekend, even though it's the first round. Uh, so I think Chiefs, Chiefs have, out of the top four teams, Chiefs have the best draw. Mm. They have Royal Eagles, uh, who are a Glad Africa Championship team. Mm. But then we also have Sundowns versus Super Sport United mm. and Orlando Paris versus Bidvest Vits. Mm. Predictions, gents. So quickly, I'll go Chiefs win. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go... Supersport win because they are cap specialists, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go Pirates win. Interesting. Mm. You actually was struggling with this yesterday. It's a tough one. It's a tough one, you know. Um, I'll give Pirates because of the momentum that they have, mm -hmm. and uh, for Sundowns because they hardly lose to Supersport. Um, I'll give it to Sundowns. 
Yeah, <laughs> but, but also Sundowns have nothing to show for this season. They need some some kind of a trophy. Yeah, it's besides they were telcom, but they always want to have two or something because yeah. they definitely see that the league is gone. Mm. So I think Sundowns. What do you say? You, what do you say? You said they think the league's gone. I mean, yeah, yeah. they think the league is gone. I mean, the really the reality also sinks in. Eh? Mm. Yeah, you might come out and say whatever that you want to say in the media but you look at the numbers the reality if Chiefs keeps on winning the way they do oh sure it's in Chiefs' hands you. yeah but they, they, they're they having an advantage yeah yeah. so even if it's not by 10 points winning the league but Chiefs has yeah huge advantage and then Chiefs are playing tears what is that Royal Eagles <laughs> yeah that's that. <laughs> I don't even know they are I, no no beef no not, I, I don't I just don't know they are yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no, but Chiefs. Chiefs has also showed us flames once I actually yeah. need to bet. You know the odds of that game. Mm, right? Imagine Chiefs losing. You win the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of rands, eh? Yeah, same when we Come when on, they... Chiefs, do us a favor. Because the last time <laughs> Chiefs faced uh, a Glad Africa Championship was the Net Bank Cup final last yeah. season. They lost to TS Galaxy. Yeah. But Chiefs was No, but Chiefs team. will win this time around. They, they're very solid. They're a solid team. So okay. Chiefs, Sundowns, Pirates. Nice. Okay. So you're going with Sundowns. Fair enough? Big three, Chiefs. Should be interesting. Right? Big do we, three. Do we have a Vavavoom? Yes. Car of the week. The Car Vapa. of the week, guys. We are going with Bongile Boy, who is an attacking wide player for Polokwane. Ex Milano, decent player, very underrated. He drives in, he's been seen with the new Audi A3 TFSI. Um, this was voted the third best hatchback in the world after the Mercedes A Class and the BMW 1 Series. Don't mm. ask me how the BMW 1 Series got in there. <laughs> but anyway. Um, sure. Yeah, I think, I think the Audi A3 as well is quite a popular car with the football fraternity, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And um, it ranges from 350,000 to 800,000 rand if you're going for the RS3. Ooh. Beautiful. Ooh. Four pipes. Four nice. pipes. Beautiful. And lastly, you know, you know, Sean, I've been down in the dumps, man. I need some motivation, bro. Here we go then, brother. Please, man. Because this one today is actually from me. Oh, yeah? Who selected you? <laughs> I selected you. Okay. Don't, under any circumstances, second guess yourself. I like that. Thank I you. like that. Thank you. It's nice, Shoney. Like Thank you, my boy. So I should go to those football trials this weekend. I still <laughs> have time left. <laughs> I just think in the world that's going today, everyone's a bit stressed. There's a lot of uh, transition happening. Um, you know, and just don't, don't doubt yourself. Yeah. Believe. Just believe. It's Even though good. it's tough at times, but the yeah. universe always provides. Yeah. I got you. Well, that's how we wrap up episode 13 of the car wash. Thank you very much, gents, for coming through. Thank you, sir. I think it's been it's been a it's been a good one. It's been a good one. Uh before you hit the last, I just want the I just want the no one says no to Gaston. No one says no to Gaston. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Today is a great day for a car wash. Yeah, sure. Car wash. <laughs> <laughs> this is the car wash on Sokola Duma Radio. This is a Sangana Corner.